Today I'm teaming up with James Bradley Day. I've come here to his private shooting ground to test out the new Hull Superfast 24 gram. And to discuss with him how to move from a club shooting level up to competition shooting. Morning James, how are you doing? How are we doing? Yeah, I'm excited for today. I'm excited for today. You, you teach a lot. You've got one of the finest little fun grounds for training. You've probably set on some really hard targets, but I'm hoping you set on some more <laughs> club level targets. We've got a few sensible ones. When we talk about club shooters, what does that mean to you? For me, that's someone you know, who shoots going on a Saturday, Sunday, their local ground, it's not a registered shoot, and they're going there for a bit of fun. So generally speaking, when we talk about club level shooters, we're talking about potentially easier courses? Generally, yeah. Most of the time on a club shoot, you're not going to see a 60, 70 yard battery. You might do, but generally... I've been to a few of those clubs. They do exist, but for the most part, it's for it, it, it's, enjoyment. It, yeah, it's going away, tight angles, you know, generally on a smaller piece of ground, so you don't get masses of big, long crossing stuff because you haven't always got as much space. And people are going to have fun. Exactly, And it yeah. is more fun to shoot a higher score, Exactly. I guess. If you're breaking clays, you've got a smile on your face. If you're missing clays, it's not quite as so much fun. Most people there will be shooting an ounce load or 27 grams, but... Today we brought some 24s. Yep. I am, I'm a big 21 gram fan. What they will break is impressive. These are still 1,500 feet per second though. So should we see what they can do? Looking forward to it. You've set up a few club level stands, knowing you they're probably going to be more world championship standard. <laughs> but what have we got? Uh, first one's a right to left, sort of 25 yard crosser, got loads of time on it. Followed by a teal, which I'd say would be a good club level standard. I've word. shot quite a lot of club shoots, probably more than you in recent years <laughs> as an international shooter. They're not usually that hard. Let's go. They're definitely not soft targets. They take some definite discipline to shoot. You wouldn't see those in club shoots, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might, you might. That, that is a top end pair of targets. The till wouldn't be the easiest, but one thing I was quite impressed with when I shot it a second ago was where they're quite nice and soft. You transition from that bird to there really quickly, where there's no recoil. Yeah. You get from there to there quick and smooth. And I felt getting onto that second bird, I was real comfortable with that. For a 1500 feet per second cartridge, I think the super fast, the recoil is firmer being a fast cartridge, but these 24s, they remove any essence of nastiness. 100%. Yeah, and I've shot a few super fast before and they're nice, but you know you're shooting them. Then they've still got that, you know, they, they still hit hard like a super fast would, but without that recoil. Oh, you've had a test. Shoot the full course. We've got the D in the... Uh, D in or D in the two. on the first very nice small move and so what you're saying is most people that you'd see will be thinking about picking it up here and going Whoa. exactly yeah their eyes stay with the gun they come down low whereas i'll start meters away from where i want to kill it because it's a small movement that's efficient and i can repeat and the main thing with that is the whole point's good but i'm doing the work with my eyes so my eyes still come back away from the gun and i'm just watching the bird into the gun it's a small movement i can repeat it over and over again yeah less instinctive more whatever the correct word is. Yeah, and on a bird like that, I'm not worrying too much about technique. You know, it's a going away bird. It's just putting a gun in the same place every time, putting your eyes in the same place. Like the going away bird over there that you missed three times. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's an interesting thing. I think as people progress, that seems to be the natural thing. You pick up a gun, you learn instinctively, and then you try, you hit your ceiling of instinct, and yeah. that'll be different for different Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, everyone's, that might be 70, that might be 80, that might be 90. Mm -hmm. You know, it's dependent on how natural you are. The more natural you are, the more you're gonna get away with instinctive shooting. It's only as good as your eyes, your body, and your mind on that day. And that's, exactly. that's a hard trinity to put in line. Yeah, and the thing is, you see a lot of people go, oh, I shot a 90 one day, but then I shot a 70 the other, and it was a real similar course. Is, it, is this is this touching a nerve? <laughs> it, a lot of that is because one day their timing might be great, yeah. but their technique might not be great. But if the timing's on, you get away with most things. But then you have another day where you're a little bit tired, you know, you're feeling it a bit, and your timing's not on. You're asking your body to do the thing. But, exactly. Yeah. Whereas if you have a day where your timing's not on and your technique's good and you're doing the work before you get in a stand, suddenly, even when you're not 100%, it's a lot more forgiving. Hull's plan with this cartridge was simple. Reduce the load from 27 grams to 24 grams to keep it cost efficient at a time when everything is getting more expensive. 
However, the cartridge still needed to perform like its popular 27 gram brother, giving great brakes at any range and cycling in semi-autos. Ever impressive 24 gram cartridges. Like an ounce is nice, but we used to shoot 32 grams. Well, I didn't, neither did you. Old people used to shoot 32 grams <laughs> at competition. That is impressive what we shot so far. Yeah, and I've never had anything against 24 gram at all. Like a lot of with the Olympic disciplines, that when they changed it from 28 to 24, the scores actually went up. There are 67 mil shell as well, which is interesting that they apparently cycle at all semi automatics. I should have brought one to test, but I believe it. <laughs> I would like to try and test these out a little bit more. I think these kind of targets, quarter choke, absolutely brilliant. The full choke was... Yeah, we know they're gonna good. do the job. So far, mate, these cartridges are impressive. They seem to be producing some good brakes. Yeah. We should test them out on something more tasty. I think this would be your sort of higher end club club level targets. Yeah, I mean, they're quite tasty for competition targets, really. You would think most places in competition aren't gonna use this entire valley for <laughs> a pair. <laughs> this is a hard one. Let's give it a go. On that bird, it's normally more line than, don't want masses, but it's getting the line right. Yeah, you can't cut it off so easy. It's That's a real so case make, of point of make your plan, stick to it. I shot that five different ways until the end. I was like, do the thing you should do. And that discipline is is the difference between and me and you. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a club shooter, I used to shoot everything with Intercomp 24s because I preferred that smoothness. But I found that they didn't, they didn't have the whack at the other end that these do. Yeah. The hardened shot, the speed. I know that everyone goes, speed doesn't matter in cartridges. But speed nah. does kill. Slower cartridges will still break clays, but speed kills. Important, like you said, look at your show pair. Maybe even look at the team before you, because yeah. I... And pay attention to where it actually lands and where it's coming from. You'll get a proper idea of what's going on. Yeah. So often, especially with middies or 70 mils and that sort of thing, you look at a bird and you go, God, that's a big bird. And you look where the trap is, you look where it's landing, you think, actually, it's only 30, 35 yards away. And yeah. it, you might have gone in there thinking it was 50. Yeah, and that's two foot a lead, not four foot, which is where I went wrong. Well shot, mate, really nice. That crosser broke absolutely lovely. Nice puff of smoke off it. Yeah, to be fair, I'm really impressed with them. Uh, and one thing that I'm really impressed with is how soft the recoil is compared to the 27 gram. Mm. You know, it's what people don't understand a lot of times is how you transition from one bird to another is so, so important, especially at club sort of level where you might be shooting a lot of going away birds, for example, where you might have to get from there to there quickly. If you're shooting a big thumpy cartridge and you're getting a lot of recoil, you're so much slower getting to that second point. Or, you know, quicks in pairs, exactly the same thing. Also, after a extended round of clays, you get tired. Recoil does tire you out. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to uh, getting them on is, is the sim days at home. So we've got quite a mix of closer targets, longer targets, and we've got one drive in particular where we throw crossing birds from 30 to 40, 50, 60 yards. Yeah, the 21 gram do break them, but it would be nice giving people a little bit more confidence with if the 24s. If you get someone turn up with a skeet gun, as you know, sim days are the variety days, aren't they? You're gonna get people turn up with grandad side by side or with any old gun. Yeah. Giving them a little bit more confidence, given a lot of these boys might be used to a more 32 gram load. There's nothing wrong with that. No, 100%. No, I'm very impressed. Before we go, and because we've had a look at what these cartridges will actually achieve, how about we shoot it from about there? Sounds good to me. I mean, we've turned that from a competition clay into a very tough clay. Yeah. Oh, we've got another 10 yards if you want. Right. Put it this way, I wouldn't want to get there for my last stand for 100 straight and see that. We'll see if you can break it with a 24 gram through a three quarter choke. <laughs> What's that, 50 yards, 55? 
Yeah. Yeah, all day long. Yeah, keep it nice. I think it's an interesting thing. We've done this with a lot of the club cartridges with Hull, played with them at long range. It's never that they can't do it, but as we've discussed in previous videos, if you are presented with something big, chuck the best at it. Exactly. <laughs> It's always interesting. You don't have to be putting a lot of power on things. In fact, often I find uh, you, as things are dying off. Yeah, and great example that would be, you look at the scores from somewhere like Honesbury, Westfield, those sort of shoots. They're not extreme range, but they're wound up, show loads of belly, nice straight lines, but at 40, 50 yards, some of them. And the scores that win those shoots are always so much higher than the shoots that you go to and a lot of people, oh, that's easy but something on no spring, you move the gun a little bit and straight away you're in front. If, you, if you're shooting something 50 yards in a nice straight line, you can move the gun. Once you've found it, it's easy to replicate. It's an attention thing, isn't it? You get into a stand with a big clay, you go, yeah, bang, bang, bang. You just think a bit dopey, hanging, connection, and actually attention on that target is it's like a TGS show versus a TSC <laughs> yeah. show. It's like an entertaining film versus a boring film, isn't it? You can sit and watch the entertaining film and it will go like that. In a boring film, you'll be playing on your phone every five minutes or going for a wee, you'll just, it's not even that sometimes, it's the fact that if you're shooting a target that's fast and comes across you quickly, you can move the gun, it's a bit more instinctive, and you just go naturally with it and your body follows. If you're shooting something real slow and floaty, it might be a similar distance, but it's so much easier to go whizzing off in front of, or high, low, and yeah, it puts its way. If I were to give, be given a chance in my last stand for, to win a big shoot, I'd rather a 50 yard batu than a 50 yard crow because the pinpoint accuracy is yeah, just a lot Yeah, you know, it? there's hardly any room for error at all on something that's not doing a lot. Something that's traveling fast, you can get the gun moving. Sometimes you can feel like you're there, there or there, and it still breaks. You shoot something slow and floppy, you know if you're that much out, you'll yeah. miss it. We were both interested to see how this hardened seven and a half shot performed on a pattern board. We gummed and hard for a while about what range to test these at, but 50 yards seems to be a, or 50 meters exactly is a, yeah. You, you're not going to be shooting anything at a club level more than that, I wouldn't have thought. No. I'm... Well, as, as we've found out, I'm not a club shooter, apparently. I don't know what club shooter's oh, yeah, targets are. Good enough, mate. <laughs> you shoot three-quarter choke in both. Do yep. you think three-quarters too much for a club level shooter? Yeah, probably for the majority of the targets you're going to shoot. But as I said before, there's a reason I shoot three-quarters. It's not cause, always because the target certainly needs it. It's because of the confidence I gain off that. Whereas a club shooter, they're going to be better off sticking quarter, three-eighths or whatever in, using that as an all-round choke and, and sticking with it. At this point, it's worth saying that although this pattern will look this way through this gun with these barrels, Beretta do three different types of barrels. Most gun makers do different types of barrels. That is different chambers, different forcing cones, different chokes. Pattern plate your own gun, but we are about to show you what our guns look like. I hate bad. I've patterned the 27 grams that don't pattern that tight. No, at 50 yards as well, or 50 meters. There is something to be said for a shorter shot column and blah, 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 but... Proof's yeah. in the pudding. All right, now we know there's no more excuses. Not that we were making any, anyway. <laughs> yeah. James wanted to see the full choke. I think full choke, you might limit yourself with a very tight pattern, but let's find out, especially through this gun. Which pattern's like an absolute monster. Interestingly, I wouldn't say that's been put too much choke, but it is significantly less uniform than the other. I shot it slightly off center and it is insanely dense. There are no reason you couldn't choke that up and use it at range other than, I'd also rather have an ounce of cuff pellets at that range, potentially. Like any cartridge, I don't think that's a bad pattern by any standards, but I know that I'd prefer the quarter choke. When you look at that area there, that's tight in comparison to that side. In other words, you missed the middle. I mean, it had to happen at some point today. I'm glad it wasn't me. For me, mm. given the, the nature of the shell, it's a club shell, leading into sort of a competition, entry-level competition shell, you're not potentially gonna shoot too many targets at that range. No. And I think the lighter choking seems to be the one I'd prefer. Because if I do miss the middle, it'll still- <laughs> It still looks like you've hit it. <laughs>
We probably should have bought some plastic wooded ones to try, but we didn't. We didn't have many excuses not to hit this next target. I'll stick to the club level targets to be showboaty. She's not your public property, she's just a girl. She lost away, although she stays, she's never you. Oh, lay on that. We're now a long way back. You'll be alright, show us the way. That was a big gap. And for a 1500 feet per second cartridge, some delay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long way. Oh, thanks. Cool. It's interesting, same as when we shot it up there, you do want to kill it early. It's a hard bird if you leave it past the, the tree. The second it comes to that tree, it's dropping like a stone and starts going edgy. And also, when you, as you said, watch it for its full flight. It hits the tree and then it curls off to the right. I wouldn't like to shoot that. Look spot. James hit one out of some. And this is an interesting thing is that he then went and got a box of sovereigns. Because having seen them earlier, they are the ultimate confidence boost and they are slightly better, obviously. When you're shooting a target and you know that you then get into the stage, yeah, the, the 24 gram Superfoss are going to kill that. But you're, you're, are they going to kill it half as well as a sovereign six and a half? At 70 yards. You're asking a lot of a 24 gram exactly. fiber watch shell. Yeah. I want to see you shoot a few more in a minute, see if it wasn't just one lucky pellet. Two out of four with Sovereign Parkour six and a half is better than your rate with the super fast 24 gram. <laughs> I think any way you look at that target, it's not a gimme. No, no, and like I said, it's probably a confidence thing, but yeah. I mean, the brakes but, are. I think this is your point where you really notice a difference in what you're paying for your cartridges. Once you get out to this sort of range, you can see that paying a little bit extra more money, yeah. it is worth it. Even if you're just doing it on the bigger birds and you're shooting your more club level shells on the steadier stuff, yeah. in my opinion, it's well worth it. Price conscious shooting, you can still break clays and have a good time. 100%. Uh, and you're not gonna go to a club shoot and see a bird like that. No. And as with any sport, it's like with fishing, you can start with a little pole and go and catch fish and have fun. But the more you spend, the more you get into it, the more you want to achieve perfection. And you can do that through talent and training, Yeah. but you do need the gear to back you up. Everyone's starting out, 95% of people aren't gonna tell the difference between a sovereign parkour and a super fast. You know, if you're just starting out on your club level journey, yeah. once you've got a bit more of an understanding of it and you might be shooting some slightly bigger targets, that's when it is worth paying your extra money. But as you said, 95% of people at the beginning of their journey and across the course of their journey, could take those shells, 24 yeah, grams, seven you know, they're, And they're a great value for money shell that you're not gonna go wrong with. Again, it's a personal preference thing, but I think I do prefer them to the 27 gram. I don't see much of a difference in the end result. Yep. They're a little bit smoother, that works for me, and they're a little bit cheaper, which for the fact that we blast through cartridges quite regularly for fun, as opposed yep. to competition, because I'm that guy, club level boy, as you like to call me, a lower class shooter, <laughs> as you call me. Uh, for me, uh, who likes to have more fun with guns, who gets through quite a few shells, that 24 gram load for the days I just want to go and play, it's an absolute winner. 100%.